Hey there, guys. Thanks for being so patient with me. I'll turn the camera on in just a second. Just gonna wait for a few more people to pop in. There's currently four of you in here. Thank you so much for taking time out of your days to do some lettering with me. Um, I thought I'd try, instead of going the normal format of Crowdcast for Patreon, I'd go ahead and give this whole YouTube thing a try since I've been doing vlogging lately. Um, and I couldn't figure out how to launch an event, but I could figure out how to live stream on- Hey there, guys. Oh, I can hear myself. Being no! So with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, I fixed it. <laughs> that was funny. I was like, wait, why? How can I hear myself? No! I'm figuring this out slowly but surely. I'm doing it. <laughs> All right. Oh man, this is fun. Hey, you yeah, yay, YouTube, Nicole. Thanks, Brenda and Nicole, for coming in. I went ahead and I just went ahead and made this thing public to all $7 patrons instead of just $15 ones. Um, just so maybe we can get more people in here. Normally these po uh, these kinds of video streams will only be available for $15, but I thought that I would go ahead and um, make it available for everyone since I'm having all of these fun issues. <laughs> all right, has everyone got their pencils ready? Are we ready to get started? I'm just changing up the links in the past posts to make sure everything's up to date. All right. LOL, so many Dinas, all the Dinas. All right, ready? Hey guys, it's me, welcome. I mean, I'll get better at this eventually. I mean, I was really excited about going to YouTube today because um, I'm able to use OBS, which is what I was using to stream on Twitch. So I have all these cool screens. Like I have um, all these different <laughs> options now in terms of screens, which is really cool. And now you guys can see my face and you can see the chat in your nice windows and I can kind of keep everything in check. Boom! Oh! Wait, what? 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 I know, right? Super exciting stuff. <laughs> All right, are you guys ready to get started? There's only a little bit of a lag in terms of chat interactivity and me talking, which is actually pretty good. Uh, I've never used YouTube before, so I'm really excited. So before we officially get started, I wanted to kind of announce a few different things. So obviously there's been a lot of changes to Patreon and just the way that we're doing things now on this platform, just so that way I could focus more on helping you guys more personally versus spending a ton of time going ahead and creating custom graphics for the zine. Um, one of those things is creating new products. And you guys are literally like the first people to see this like up close and personal. I've been giving away a couple of sneak peeks here and there on Twitter and Instagram, but you guys, the four of you that are chilling here, get this stuff first. I'm gonna turn down my music just a smidge. All right, so first things first is I have these cool stickers that have that say you got this on them. Um, it's a transfer sticker that you can easily put on a water bottle or your mirror or anything just as a way to kind of remind you that you have this. And I'm creating a set. So those are the stickers. And then, but the real showstopper is these postcards. Are we ready? Are we ready? Okay. Sh look at that baby. Oh my God. Now this is a pep talk postcard. Give a compliment, make a difference. So you can give to your friends. This pep talk was written by you. And it's this really, really nice. You hear how hard that is? It's hard paper. It's got the seam is pink, which is really cool. I got these printed from Moo. I'm going to be creating little sets of these dudes that are going to be releasing next week, which is really, really cool. So you guys can either A, uh, get a pair or a few uh, for your friends and family for maybe Christmas. Or if you yourself just need a pep talk, I will be more than happy to handwrite and send you one of these postcards with uh, a nice little motivational <laughs> personalized talk from me to you to kind of help you push yourselves further and reach those creative goals that you've been trying so hard to get. How nice, I remember seeing your sketch. Yeah, we've come, we've come pretty far. All right, let me put these babies away. I'm like, they're so white and pristine. I'm like afraid 
to touch them because I don't want my dirty artist hands that are covered in graphite like all the time. I don't even use pencil that much. They're just covered in graphite. Oh, and they also come in these really cool envelopes. So it's like, you can give this to your friend, right? And it'll get to your friend in the mail. They'll be like, oh, it's just a normal envelope. And they'll be like, oh shit, it's pink on the inside. And then it's got like a gorgeous postcard in there and sticker. It's like the best gift ever. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Cause that way, anytime you're having a low moment, you can just look at your sticker or your postcard that you'll probably hang up on your wall and always remember those kind words that your friends or myself shared with you. And I think that's pretty cool. Okay. Without further delay, <laughs> let's get into this worksheet. Okay, so we're hopefully you guys have had a little bit of time to explore with these worksheets. Um, so I was kind of hoping some of you guys would prep beforehand where you would uh, go through the first step, which is tracing. And then the second step is what we're going to be going over today in class and uh, just really me walking you through each of these steps to create this chiseled type. Now, originally this chiseled type was, and you might've seen this, me writing this in the workbook, but it was really well known on buildings and architecture, especially on things like churches, universities, anything that was supposed to be <sighs> seen as high end or sophisticated uh, was very common for it to have all capital letter serif type, which was pretty cool. Um, and this, I think would be really great for all different kinds of styles. There's more than one way to do a chiseled type style like this one. So you guys, it's not a requirement for you to fill in the inline with these dashes. There's a couple other ways you can do it. And I'm going to show you how to in this video. Now, keep in mind that I'm going back and forth between screens. So if I miss your question, I'll get to it as soon as I can. Um, and I was in such a rush to start the stream that I don't have anything to drink I feel very unprepared. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna be right back, get some water, and then we can get started. This is like the worst stream ever. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, Dina, you crazy bitch. <laughs> Okay, I have my water. And oh look, it's got a sticker on it. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Brenda, Nicole, you ready? Anybody else is watching, please say hello in the chat so I can see who's here um, and just be able to connect with you guys a little bit better. And also because of all of the technology nonsense, feel free to tweet out this link to the YouTube video if you want your other friends to be able to check it out live in the chat as well. What's up, Lindsay? Meme voice. You're doing amazing, sweetie. So excited for this. Oh, thanks. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get into it. Woo! Dina, you're hitting all the buttons. You don't know what button to push, silly. Okay, so I'm gonna be using my iPad Pro and Apple Pencil. I'm using something called AstroPad. So that way I can screen mirror Photoshop to my iPad. It just makes it easier so that way we can really kind of zoom in here <laughs> and get all up close and personal. So just so you guys can tell the difference between the original and the sketch we're gonna be doing, I'm gonna be using a probably like HB Photoshop pencil brush. Let's find the perfect. I have a shit ton of these brushes. I usually create something called the Micron 0.5. That's my default brush I, I normally use to create the scenes. Let's do a 2B pencil. All right, before we get started, let's just do some really, 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 really quick hand warm up exercises. Okay, everyone, put your fists in the air like this. We're gonna do the fist and release because you gotta work out your hand just like your body before a workout. Ready? Okay, so squeeze them, squeeze them, squeeze them, squeeze them, squeeze them, release. Ah, oh, do you feel that blood, that blood flowing to your tips? All right, squeeze, 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 squeeze. Release. All right, shake it out. All right, now we're gonna do thumb touches, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your pointer finger and touch it to your thumb. And then your middle finger, touch it to your thumb. Your index, pinky. You got it? Okay, now repeat, but faster. This is good, this is good hand-eye coordination because I, I hear you need that to draw, I don't know. All right, shake it out. 
Now we're gonna do the bitch slap, which is this. It's different than this. It's gotta be like, stop it. Just some hand warm ups. All right, you should hear a couple pops. You hear that pop? That's my wrist. Don't worry, I'm fine. All right, you ready? Okay. And we're off. <laughs> yes! Okay, so let's draw the letter A. So first things first, let's go ahead and draw an upside down a uh, triangle. About the width that you see of the A. Do the crossbar about here. So you're doing it lower than your X height. This top line is your cap height. This bottom line is your baseline. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and add weight to the right side of that A. Because the only way that we know where to add thicks and thins in letter is any line that goes down gets thick. Any line that goes up gets thin. So if we were to draw this letter up, thin, down, thick, right? Now, even though these are varied weight, we still wanna add a little bit of weight to our thinnest parts. Now this is going to be a little complicated. All right, so we added weight to our left stem and our center crossbar. Now we're gonna add serifs. Now the easiest way to add a serif is draw a straight line right along the guide for the feet. And then we're doing what's called a squared off serif. So what we can do is create another little Try to make all these feet about the same size. Now this would technically be called a slab serif. And then you just go like that. So that way it kind of links into it. And then you have your serif. So that's only if you're having issues with your serifs kind of looking different throughout the letters. If you think that's just a little bit too many lines, always start with this guy, right? And I think I made this guy a little bit too wide. That's why I like doing things on my iPad. You could just go ahead and just go for it. If that's easier for you. But I wanted to show you both ways just so you knew. Okay, now in order for us to add the chisel, we need to go ahead and erase any crossover lines. Now, typically, if you were doing this for an entire phrase and not just for practice like we are today, then you would go ahead and probably draw out all of the serif type first before adding any sort of decoration to the outside or the inside of the letter. And you'd probably fill it in, redraw it a few times, and then add the decoration. But since we're practicing today like this, we're gonna be going ahead and just adding the decoration per each letter after we draw it, which I think is a nice, interesting challenge uh, to be able to give yourself, I think. Okay, so I went ahead, I erased all my marks. Now we go ahead and just add the chisel line. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce my brush. If you're using a pretty thick pencil or pen or marker for your shape, I would highly recommend using a thinner pen if you're using micron pens. I'm a personally a huge fan of microns. Um, maybe go to a uh, 0.2 or 0.3 um, for the smaller nibs and for a bigger one, maybe a, a 0.5. So we're gonna go ahead just try to draw one consistent line without picking up your pencil too many times. Now notice that top, I went ahead and I created this little div. So I could have just done a straight line, but I have it kind of curve into itself so it better matches the shape on the outside. Now remember, if you wanna do a really nice consistent long line, you wanna be able to lock your wrist and move your arm. If you find yourself doing this, your wrist can only do this for oh so long by being able to lock your wrist and move your arm, you're able to actually uh, create a longer line. It'll probably be a hell of a lot straighter too. Okay, so we went ahead and we created on the thickest part of that line, that kind of embellished inline. You can also do it for each of the serifs. In this case, it's just the one. And then if you want to, you can fill it with lines like we did in the sample book. You could do something like that, or you could literally just fill this entire piece if you wanted to, or I've seen a lot of people either just do the lines on the left side, instead of having the lines go all the way across, 
they just kind of have them go usually from the left side right to about the middle or they're like but wait there's more i know you can also do like a half fill versus a whole fill do a half fill and then you fill the rest with lines So those are just some stylistic options for chisel type. I'm gonna leave that one there. Now the final step is adding the drop shadow. Now in previous issues, you may have noticed that the way we've been doing drop shadows is we always draw the lines of our drop shadow first. Don't do what I'm doing, right? But in this case, since we're doing, um, <laughs> since we're doing a drop shadow that's just slightly to the right, we don't need to make these lines go down. So instead, you could just go ahead and draw in the drop shadow like this. Now notice that I didn't do those lines and it's only going slightly to the right. This is because this is a chiseled A. It's not necessarily a drop shadow that you would see normally in a piece of type. So you want to make sure that this drop shadow that you guys are creating does not go further below the baseline, okay? You guys got that? <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the letter B. This time I think I'll try to use a brush that's all the same size. Okay. So let's draw that stem, just a nice uh, vertical line. Turn off my notifications, I'm getting comments on YouTube. <laughs> Not on this YouTube, but other YouTubes. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and draw this stem. We're gonna take this B. We want where the two bowls of the B to meet slightly above the X height. So we're gonna go ahead and draw this first bowl that's gonna be smaller. It's gonna be like a nice little hump right there. And then we're going to create a much bigger. Now the rule to the B, we've said this a few times, we're going to repeat it. This bowl should always be shorter than the bottom bowl. Now I super accentuated it just to make a point. Now you can see that I'm having issues. So one thing that you can do is draw a straight line here, draw a straight line here, and then draw the arc. Sometimes that can be a little bit easier. Okay, so that is the wireframe, uh, essentially the skeleton of our B. We're gonna add some weight on the left-hand side. And then we're gonna add weight to the bowls. Now again, we're only adding weight as the line goes down. So we would draw this, right? If we were using a brush pen, we would draw this stroke thick, as we're going out, this is thin because we're not going down yet. And then as it goes down, it curves and gets thin and then it gets thicker as it goes down and then thin again as we're no longer going down. So this is how you know where to place the weight, especially on rounded things. Cause I like I know people have a ton of issues adding weight to anything that's round like an S or an O or a Q. I just spit all over my iPad. This is live, baby. All right, so we have to go ahead and add the fins in there too. Okay. Just keep in mind that this space right here needs to be the same as this space and this space. Where these two bowls meet in the center should not be wider than the other. They all need to be the same weight. I see a lot of people do this. This is wrong. Draw the B like this. Have this measurement be that, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and erase any of these marks. So we can go ahead and fill it on an inline. Now, if you guys are like, fuck, D9 can't erase, get a pencil, don't use a pen. If your lines are wobbly like they are mine, don't worry about it. Don't feel like your expectation needs to be my drawing. 
this B right here, I drew like four times for this workbook. <laughs> so don't think that like, oh, Adina just nailed it on the first try. No home slice. I wish I was that fucking talented. Um, not quite. Okay, so right now we have a sans serif B. Let's go ahead and change that. Let's add some feet. I'm gonna be taking my sweet time on these first few letters and then we're gonna speed it up, I promise. So add a foot on the top and the bottom. Make sure we erase any crossover lines. We always want to make sure that when we're drawing letters, we want to do it shape by beautiful shape. We don't just want to like go ahead and draw like this because that is bubble letters. Remember bubble letters from like elementary school? We don't want to draw bubble letters. We want to seem somewhat like we know what the fuck we're talking about. All right, let's go ahead and add the chisel. If you are doing things digitally, I highly recommend you hit shift as you draw for any straight lines. I'm gonna go ahead and do that cheat now. Make sure it curves in, just like before. Same thing with this B. Ooh. I'm gonna go ahead and just add the same thing that's in the book. Just these horizontal lines. Just make sure that all the lines are horizontal and are more or less the same distance apart. This is just for practice. We don't need to get too super anal on this part. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add the drop shadow. Now you might notice with this B, I add a curved shadow. So I'm not just doing this, I'm doing this. That does give it the appearance of looking more chiseled because it's going along the bowl of the letter. So therefore it warps towards the top and bottom. I almost missed the bottom. Do the B, pretty much just mirror that same shape. Then as it goes down, it gets thin, just like the original B. All right. We have two letters down. That's what's up. Super excited, okay. <laughs> that B looks way less jacked than that A when I was using a super huge um, brush <laughs> to draw it. All right, let's draw the C. Now the C, C's are a bitch. Anything that's like a huge bowl is gonna be hard. So one thing that I like to do is I'll draw a thin line just so I can make sure that the top and the bottom of my C's line up. And this is something I usually have to draw a few times before I can get it just right. I try to go a little bit higher, a little bit below and above. It's a little bit too low. A little bit above and below the guides. I feel like this goes out more, here we go. Add weight, thin at the top and bottom, and go ahead and give it some weight. So don't feel bad. I'm having to fix this. Like, okay, I obviously didn't make that wide enough. Anytime you feel like you're not nailing something on the first try, just remember lettering is not calligraphy. Say it with me. Lettering is not calligraphy. You're not supposed to get it right at the first try. You're totally allowed to erase and redraw as many times as your heart fucking needs or your ego sometimes. See, look, I just drew that like three times and it still doesn't look like the original. It just takes a little bit of finesse. Now, how we're gonna create the serifs is this is gonna go up and then down like that with my wonky fucking C. <laughs> Same thing here, and then goes out. Now, because I have the glory of Photoshop, <laughs> I can go ahead and do this when I notice my C's are wrong. Even when I was drawing this original C, I was still, I was still wasn't able to fucking do it. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna use this as my, as my tester. I'm gonna draw over it, cause I can. Oh, it's so much better, I can already tell. See, proven fact, when you draw things more than once, it comes out better. <laughs> I'm gonna draw the, let's 
practice doing those serifs again. Up and then out and then curved. All right, getting it. All right, go ahead and add that in line. Now, when you have a curved C, you're gonna want, your, your lines are just not gonna come out horizontal. So I highly recommend just turning your page, right? So my iPad was like this, and now it's like this. So that way I can draw more, mostly horizontal lines. And go ahead and add that drop shadow. do it pretty roughly you don't feel like the need to make it perfect we're just building up our hands right now we're building up our hands all right let's get to that D can someone say hi in the chat just so I can verify that we're still live oh someone thumbs up us thanks whoever thumbs up us <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and draw this stem of the D. Try to do um, another cheat, draw the straight line, a straight line to draw that wide D that you need to draw. There we go. Now, because I made a super wide D, I'm gonna go ahead and just add weight on the inside of the letter. No, actually, no, I'm gonna go on the outside. Same thing, draw a little straight line for the thins. There we go. D still a little wide. I actually like this D more than the other D. Hello, we're still here. Okay, great. Hey, Maria. Mm -mm. All right, add some serifs in there. Some little feetsies. You might find yourself wanting to overly smooth this part out, but try not to focus on it too much. All right, let's go ahead and erase any crossover. Now you're, you're gonna, you're probably gonna be like me and you're probably like not gonna like draw lines where you see the bait, like the actual guides, but let's, let's be legit with this. <laughs> hey, Lindsay. Lindsay. Go ahead, follow that same line, right? Right here. Have it curl into itself a smidge. That's a little bit too much. There we go. Same thing with this bottom. I'm gonna do it right here so I don't mess up again. Oop. 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 Nope. Oop. Yes. Okay. I like doing these live streams because A, I don't have to worry about editing it later, which editing takes a butt ton of time. But also you guys get to see that like I'm a person and I make mistakes just like everybody else. Cause like when I see like Ian Bernard and like my friend Noah Camp just like do calligraphy, I'm like, how the fuck? And it's just like perfect. It's just perfect. The first time they draw it, I'm like, that will never be me. Like, and it's not like, oh, Gina, you could be anything you want to be. Like, I know that. <laughs> but it's not really like super important to me. And much rather like create more content. If I have to draw it a few times, it doesn't bother me. Cause I really enjoy the process of refinement and like seeing in stages over time, like your work get more beautiful with each iteration. Because I think it, it like satisfies that design mind of mine since I was originally a graphic designer before I even started illustrating professionally. Um, it was just so nice to like make one little pixel tweak here. It's like, so like, oh, what if I right align the text instead of left align the text? Like when you're doing layout, like I really like that. And I think that's why I'm drawn to this process of lettering so much. All right, let's get to the E. Already spent a half an hour in four letters because of all the technical difficulties. Super fun. All right, go ahead and draw your E. The trick to an E is this and this need to be the same width, okay? This center crossbar just needs to be a little short of those two top and bottom pieces, got it? Okay, let's go ahead and add weight. Now, 
Now, all my letters are probably going to be like all different thicknesses and stuff just because of the process we're doing it. But this should be able to show you the basics. Serif. Do the serifs at the end. You want your serifs to be about the same weight as your thinner parts of your stems, just as a, as a little hint. You don't want these big old clunky serifs when you got, the, if you have like a thinner part of your letter. And I already know that my center line is thinner or whatever, but whatever, we're just practicing for now. All right, same thing, a line, a line. Ooh. Have it curl into itself a little bit and follow that line shape of the serif. Go ahead and add anywhere else that you feel like it could add like a little bit of a chisel. You don't necessarily need to add these little chisel pieces inside of the serifs, but I think it's a nice touch when you do. But you definitely don't have to fill them with lines. Um, only worry about the thickest parts of the letter to add those lines to. All right. Look at that E. Look at that E. Oh, I, I totally forgot to do the drop shot on the D. Oops. You curve in that drop shadow. I'm missing parts. Getting too excited. Curling in that drop shadow. Having this just extend a little bit to the right. Let me go back to that D just so this page can look more finished. Now I've been trying to think of like a cool project to do chisel type. And I came up with an idea of doing like a sticker, like another transparent sticker that's like maybe like more clear and like putting it on like a wall. So like the type actually looks like it's chiseled like into the wall. What? How cool would that be? Mm. It'd be so cool. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. D, I just want to prove that I didn't forget about you, man. All right, F time, ready to F that F? All right. <laughs> A little bit shorter, getting a little bit faster every time we do a letter. Probably didn't make this one quite as wide. It's okay. Doing our little serifs. I think you have to do a serif on the on like both along like the left and right of a page. It just makes it easier to do that line. Erase the crossover. And that sun's going down pretty hard. It freaks me out that it gets dark at like five. It's fucking weird, man. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and add that chisel line. Don't forget, it needs to swoop slightly so it looks more chiseled. Oop. Same little detail. Magnifique. All right, don't forget about that drop shadow. Now, if I start to go too fast for anybody, just let me know. I'll slow down a little bit. Notice that like with just these letters, 
you can see dramatic, like, like A is kind of wobbly, B is like meh, C is like ripped, my D is too Y, my E is like, okay, I'm starting to get the hang of this lettering thing, and my F is like fucking perfect. <laughs> That's something you're going to notice as you practice. Like the more you practice, even just in, within that fucking practice session, it's going to be better. That's just how it works. All right, let's get to this G. Same thing. You want to make sure everything lines up. Just like you did the C, go ahead. I like to do, I'm trying to like go really lightly until I can figure out my exact shape that I want. Or my lesson last time. All right, I got my C kind of mocked in there. Going to go ahead and go up for that part of the G. And I'm going to add the thickness. Have it get thin again. Oh, this G's gonna come out sexy. All right, I went ahead, I added weight. Same thing with the C, you want this to go up, and then down, and then twist up. This is always gonna look a little bit different every time I do it. Maybe I have it stop a little bit shorter. There we go. Nice little straight line for that serif. Now what I like to do, even though I'm doing this like in blocks, is this little curve, I like it to be curved all the way. So I'll go ahead and just curve that out instead of it just being a straight line here. Actually curve it out a smidge. And every single time I draw a bowl, it always gangster leans to the right. I don't know why. Oop, all right. Power of Photoshop. All right, go ahead and solidify. My line just a smidge more, making pressing it down a little bit more with a little bit more confidence. Cool. Let's erase some of that gobbledygook on the inside. You guys definitely get in the habit of not trying to put that much pressure, 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 on your pencil when you're first starting out because you can't help but kind of press pretty hard when you're just starting something because you're not super familiar so your brain makes you want to like you're like if your thumbs and your hands are really hurting after 10 minutes of drawing then you know you've been pressing down too hard all right let's add some of that chisel some of that chisel that's just that's just a fun thing to say add it here in that little thick part you can add it right here too Go ahead and fill it up. Let's go ahead and add that drop shadow. So remember only adding the drop shadow slightly to the right. Get into that H, straight lines make me happy. So I think the original, I went ahead and I made it pretty thin. And then I went ahead and added weight on the outside is what I did, I think, from the step by step, since I don't have them in front of me. There we go. And just like a little bit of weight, a little bit of weight to the crossbar. And some straight lines for our serif since it's going on both sides. Draw a little square, hook it in. Draw a little square, hook it in. Square, hook, square, hook, square, hook. It's like kickboxing but with letters. Look at that beautiful fucking H. <laughs> All right, erase any crossover. All right. Now, since the chisel is both on the left and right side, let's go ahead and just draw straight lines. Right, 
where those arcs in the serifs meet the stems and then have them both dip in. And then go ahead and just connect them. Boop. Kind of messed it up here on the, on the right side, but that's okay. Fill with lines. I'm a big fan of serifs. It looks like such an easy type style, but I see so many people mess it up. Like, I actually think that script is the easiest, but that might just be because that's what I probably start. I think that's what like a lot of people start with the script because it's just so gosh darn pretty. Underneath the crossbar. Magnifique. Mwah. All right. So we only have about 15 minutes left. So instead of us just trying to finish this sheet, I would much rather have you guys choose the hardest characters. So let's pick out four characters and the rest of this alphabet you would like me to go over. So I'm assuming it's probably going to be more on the second sheet. So maybe M. I know W is pretty hard, R's, O's, P's. Go ahead and let me know in the chat and just go ahead and type away what letters you would like me to go over. I think the first one that I'll kind of roll with because there is a slight delay, I'm gonna go in and just start with the O. As I'm working on the O, look at this sheet and let me know what other three letters you'd like me to go over to better help you with this style, okay? All right, we're gonna draw the inside of this O first. I'm trying to figure out. We're gonna do the inside. I'm just kind of marking little lines, telling myself where to put the O. You could do it two ways. You could start from the inside out or the outside in, whatever one you think is easier. Now, if you wanna mark the weight of your O, Go ahead and mark those. Your O goes slightly above and below the baseline in cap height. Hey, Holly. What's up, baby girl? Nicole votes for M, S, and X. All right, anybody else? Go ahead and connect those dots for your O. This is very much looking like is it Oregon Ducks is that a thing I feel like I should know sports more but I just don't I just don't <laughs> all right you might want to work on it because we put in those da those little dabs your brain's gonna want to add um like it's for it to look more squared off but you obviously don't want it to look squared off now a key to an O is now flipping up flipping over your paper so flip your paper upside down now look at your O now there's probably, it's probably gangster leaning to one side or the other. So hopefully you haven't been um, working too hard on that pencil weight and you're being a little bit lighter so you can go ahead and refine it and see those treble spots. Of how it might like, like look off a smidge. Like me, I probably wanted this to be a little bit more wide. But I wish, I probably would not have seen if I, unless I had turned my paper upside down. Now look at that scrappy O. It's a scrappy O, man. <laughs> Welcome to my life. I love this set. Gonna use it over the weekend. Oh, cool. Thanks, Holly. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> everyone, everyone definitely check out Holly. She's a bomb. She's da bomb. People still say that, right? I'm bringing it back. All right, so we got M, S, X, S, and W, S, M, and R. So we got M's for sure. We're doing, we're doing, we're gonna do M's next, and definitely S's, and then you guys get to duke it out 
whether or not we do W's or R's. Hello, a, ga a gangster leaning? Yeah, it's gangster leaning. I have all, oh, girl, you don't even know all my words for, I'm like, oh, your letters look drunk. <laughs> that way I'm like blaming the letters and not you. <laughs> That's the artist, like, oh, it's the, the letters just, you know, you need to lose some weight. You need to stop eating a Dunkin' Donuts every morning, okay, Mr. O? Like when one of your letters looks, yeah, I have a whole weird thing that I do. <laughs> All right, so that O is kind of whatever. Let's go ahead and add that chisel. Add that chisel sizzle. <laughs> Don't forget to rotate your page while you're doing horizontal lines. You always want to be drawing towards yourself for more control over your pencil, pen, or stylus. All right, let's go ahead and add that drop shuttle. Remember, you don't want to be going too above or below your baseline. Everything should pretty much match your O. Now I made this O wider, but I kind of like it better. It looks more like the dollar O. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you look at the style of typography on money. Dina, you're getting crazy. What are you doing? You're trying to show people how to draw and you can't even draw, girl? Like what is happening? <laughs> All right, there we go. I fixed it. It's fine. No one saw it. Drunk lettering live should be a show. Happy hour lettering. <laughs> um, well, there's already drunk lettering. That's already a podcast that I have opinions about. But yeah, so somebody already made that where they like legit just get drunk with other lettering artists on a podcast. <laughs> so, <laughs> Brenda. <laughs> We could, maybe we could do a drink and draw or one of, one of these days. Those are pretty fun. All right, so M is next. We got M, S, and let's just do... I would have never considered starting from the center. Damn life. I know, right, Holly? Um, all right, let's do M, S, and X. Yeah, let's do M, S, and X. Okay, so where's my M at? From the front to back, can you repeat that? All right. Give me a Mr. M. I'm gonna show you what's, who's boss over here is. <laughs> oh, redo. What am I doing? Hitting buttons? Okay. So let's do the M. Oh, this is gonna be so hard. Ah! Okay, ready? Okay. I'm excited. Alright. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw <laughs> my outside first. Because I feel like it'll be easier. <laughs> oh. And then you just want to make sure that where your M meets, it actually meets in the center. This is very, very important for your skeleton, okay? So you need to put the two lines next to each other, but not too far away, so because you're going to add weight, okay, to this skeleton. So we go in ahead and we put the lines, we make sure that they are even, okay? And then we're going to put some weight on them. And don't you think that this accent is racist because my last name is Rodriguez, okay? I know how to do Spanish. <laughs> my whole fucking family talks like that. Okay. <laughs> so now we're gonna add, let's add a little bit of weight to that left stem. We're gonna add a lot of weight to this downward dude. A little bit of weight. Uh, and um, I can tell that, so this really depends. If you want this M to be squared, then you add the weight here and you square it off and then you go up. Okay. If you want that M to be like, um, pointed like it is now, then you add it on this side. Go ahead and add some weight. Now again, make sure that your M is thin, thick, thin, thick. It shouldn't be, I don't wanna see this. That's not right, I don't wanna see this. That's not right either. None of it's right, it's wrong. I think I might move over this. Cause I, I was like, when I was drawing this, I was like, this looks wrong. I'm gonna move it over a little bit. So it doesn't have that, it doesn't have this thing that I have there where it looks like they're not friends anymore and they broke up. Let's move it over a smidge. There we go. That's better. That's way better. All right, let's go ahead and add these serifs. Remember just drawing a straight line when you have to go on the, both the left and the right side. 
Gonna draw a little tiny little baby seraph. A little tiny baby seraph on the left stem, okay? And then we're gonna put a little big seraph over here. I've not drunk. This is how I act in real life. You're welcome. Okay, so we're gonna screw off these seraphs. You guys like my focus playlist? So that way I won't get dinged with copyright infringement. That's what's up. So that way, like, it's not this awkward of me, D Dina, just like staring at my screen. All right, so we went ahead, we added our seraphs and everything. We'll go ahead and erase the crossover. Oh man, this M has turned out way better than I thought it was going to. I was like getting all like down on myself, I'm like, oh, this M's gonna suck. See, guys, gotta get, gotta get confident. All right, and I, yes, I know that my two stems aren't the same exact weight, but that's okay. See, I'm already tweaking. I'm already tweaking. All right, do your straight line for your chisel lines. This guy, you know where this line goes because it's just the extension of this line, right? Just with a break in it. Dina, draw straight lines. There you go. Now this guy. Whoop, 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 whoop. That's the sound effect you make. Don't forget to turn your page so you can draw your chisel lines. Go ahead and add that drop shadow. Hmm, it doesn't make sense to curve that line. Straight, have it kind of go towards to the right more. This guy too. Just takes practice, y'all. Just a little bit of practice. So I was supposed to do the second recording of the Women of Illustration podcast. You guys have probably heard me talk about this a ton, but if you haven't, I'm starting a podcast that launches in January of next year, featuring um, female illustrators from all over the world, just to make women more visible just in general in the art industry. We talk on topics of confidence, how to be more independent woman, um, marketing strategies, how to get better on social media. Uh, today we're talking about the three best ways to learn illustration, being self-taught, right? Uh, going to art school or going through an apprenticeship, mentorship program, or internship. And I literally spent an hour with technical difficulties for the podcast. I mean, just for us to end up having to reschedule for tomorrow. And I swear to God, every single step creating this podcast is just boom, resistance. Oh, I can't get through this wall. <laughs> and it, so my troubleshooting skills are going to be on fucking point. On fucking point. By season two of this podcast, I'm going to be such a professional. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> But I will say this, I'm having so much fun. Like when something goes wrong, yes, is it frustrating? Of course. But that feeling, that little glimmer of like, holy fucking shit, I just fucking got it. I, do, I know, I know how to do the thing. I know uh, my brain has new information in it that it never had before. That fucking idea, that little spark is my everything. I love that shit. All right, we got the M, we got the O. We gotta do the S, right? We gotta do the S. S's suck. <laughs> I had to redo the S like six times for this worksheet. It was not, S's are not easy. So like anytime, like, cause uh, I definitely get asked a lot on like podcasts and stuff. What's, oh Dina, what's your favorite letter? Not like that, but that's what they sound like when they ask that question. Um, I always say S because it's the hardest. And I want to seem like I'm cool. <laughs> Okay, we ready? All right, S's suck. Are we ready? I'm excited. Make sure I'm on the brush tool, even though my arrow tool is showing up. Okay, there we go. All right, S is gonna go slightly above and slightly below your baseline. Okay, you gotta make sure. We're gonna draw little lines. Your S lines up. This needs to line up. 
Right here. Super light. Okay, so you just, you got your little skeleton dude. And now we're gonna add weight along the spine, which is the downward of the S. S's are my nemesis! It's, we all feel that way. S, S is for same. <laughs> so, we're gonna use that spine as the middle point of adding weight, okay? So you kind of add a little bit of weight on this side, and then you add a little bit of weight on this side. <gasps> Did I just blow your mind? Is your mind like, Psh, is it on the pavement? Has it been blown? Is it like on your fucking wall in your house? I know. Okay. So, <laughs> let me zoom in more. Um, so then you just continue this guy. Whoop. With the fin, right? Same thing, a little bit here. Like a little bit of banner, a little bit of banner action happening in your lives. All right, and then you're gonna go. You're gonna go like this, and then you're gonna. Then you're gonna go like this, and you're gonna go like this, and then you go whoop. Oh fuck! Sorry, I'm just like really excited <laughs> to be here with you guys right now. <laughs> All right, it goes up, whoop, and then it goes a little curve, a little curve, dude. Boom! Look at that S. You so sexy, girl. Look at that fat bottom bitch right there. All right, so I'm probably gonna make this just a smidge more fat. Cause I like my girl's thick, you know what I'm saying? So notice that when I added weight, I added a little bit of weight on the top and a little bit of weight on the bottom. This isn't even caffeinated, Dina. Oh, you wait. You wait for caffeinated, Dina. I'm so excited that I figured out YouTube for live streams because then we could use my professional OBS system so I can have all these different scenes and cool stuff. And then I can live stream my projects a little bit better. Cause Crowdcast was okay. But like the when they would rebroadcast it, like if you missed the live stream and you had to go back and you had to you know from the future or you wanted to rewatch it, the quality of the video was so fucking bad. Ooh, it was not cute. It was not cute at all. All right, oops. So make sure everything's rounded. S has got to be round. All right, so let's go ahead and add that chisel. Dina, this S looks like it's been through some shit. Okay. Hopefully your pepper, your papers are just as messy as my papers. Fill that fucker up with some lines, yo. Here we go. Add a little bit of a tiny chisel on the serifs, and then we're gonna go ahead. Add a consistent weight. Ooh, boop. For that drop shadow. Ooh, I forgot to add weight in the original right here. Dina, for shame. And then you could add like a little bit right there. Oh, and then we have the S, and then we have the S. Now, I'm very aware that it's, again, gangster leaning. This is just the way that I draw, I think. Maybe I'm not holding my page at the right angle. Boop. Now you're fine. Now you're perfect. Now you're beautiful, baby. I got you, boo. I got you. Well, I hope this has been helpful for you guys, sorry for the late start because of technical difficulties. Uh, but hey, it was our first time trying YouTube. I like YouTube, do you like YouTube? That's all screen for YouTube. Um, guys, if you have not already, please consider subscribing to my channel. I will be, con uh, if you probably have noticed, I have been consistently uh, posting out a vlog every week and I have lots of cool stuff coming up. Right now we are doing a uh, two part series on how to create your own custom products from your artwork. If you missed that, go ahead and check it out on my channel. Um, and this week we're going to be talking about, let me try to remember, uh, how to do better packaging. So if you're ready to take up your stuff to the next level, where are the best places to get custom packaging? How do you figure it, that all that stuff out? Um, and then the big, bigger part is how do we promote and market our products? So it actually sells. It's one thing, just create it. You got the packaging, you sent out the prints, but how do you actually like get people to your site so that way they give you money? Those are the kinds of things that we are going to be talking about this week. And I will be releasing my newest product next week, which I'm really excited about. I'm so excited about it. It's going to be so fun. I got to run take care of my three-year-old nephew. All right, bye. Bye, Holly. Yes, YouTube. Oh, it was great. Loved it on YouTube. Yeah, me too. Your S is like a snake. Yeah, it should be like a snake. Like a big fat snake that just ate dinner for the week or something. 
All right, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. You're amazing. If you have any uh, questions about anything at all, please feel free to uh, go ahead and comment on the community page on Patreon or up your tier to get critique coaching where you guys can get one-on-one -on -one personalized advice from me on your next creative project. Or even better, I think we have exactly one spot left in our mastermind group, which is really fucking great. Uh, everyone's really enjoying it where we all critique each other's work and you're able to get unlimited email coaching, which is really, really cool too. All right, guys, thanks so much for everything. Bye! Bye from the internet. Oh, Lindsay, just subscribe to me. Thanks, girl. You're the shit. Love you. Kisses. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.